The fourth episode of the new run of Black Mirror, Maisie Day, may have been the most difficult to learn much about if you've been searching the internet in advance of its release. We were aware that the episode will center on a problematic actress named Maisie Day, Claire Rugard, and a member of the paparazzi named Bo, Zazy Beats. Charlie Brooker, the creator of the show, has stated that this was done on purpose because it is best seen knowing nothing going in for this episode. You will understand exactly what he is talking about if you have already watched it. How did things turn out for Bo and Maisie? What exactly happened on Maisie Day? And what technology was at the heart of this tale? Here is everything you need to know about the ending of Maisie Day. The early 2000s setting of Maisie Day centers on Bo, a paparazzi who at the episode's beginning sold pictures that exposed a well-known actor having an affair with another man. The man then committed suicide, which caused Bo to quit the game. Bo, however, quickly faces a rent crisis and urgently requires a large paycheck. She speculates that this might be Maisie Day, a troubled starlet that the media is enamored with and pays top dollar to have her picture taken. Bo is unaware that Maisie recently had a car accident while under the influence of narcotics, hit a pedestrian, and fled the scene in a panic. After that, Maisie withdraws from society while still experiencing flashbacks to that evening and feelings of remorse. When Maisie hires a famous doctor, he chooses to take her to a reputable rehab facility and reserves the entire facility so that Maisie can have privacy. They had no idea that Bo was after them. Insofar as technology is concerned, Maisie Day most closely resembles episodes of The Simpsons, like the National Anthem or Smithereens, because all of the technology used is entirely real. Nothing, not memory storing contact lenses, nor virtual reality technology. Instead, the focus of this narrative is very much on cameras and the paparazzi, particularly in the early 2000s. According to Charlie Brooker, the story is set before everyone has a camera in their phone, and there is a crueler attitude towards people in the public eye. Okay, so if you saw the episode, then this is the moment you've all been waiting for, when the plot pulls off that major twist and completely defies expectations. Bo and her companion Hector show up outside the barrier with Maisie at the retreat hidden away. Witty and Duke, two far more savage paparazzi who have installed a tracker beneath Hector's bike, shortly join them. Through a tunnel they dig beneath the barrier, they are able to enter a space where Maisie is being held captive with a chain around her neck. Bo tries to set her free and succeeds in taking off her chains as Hector, Witty, and Duke merely stand there and continue taking pictures. The moon then appeared overhead at that same moment. It's obvious that something is wrong. Maisie is a werewolf, that much is true. In a flashback, it is revealed that Maisie actually hit a werewolf who bit her as she got out of the car to check on him. As Duke attempted to climb the barrier, Witty was promptly killed by Maisie, who then changes horrifyingly. Instead of saving Duke, Hector grabs his camera. To warn a police officer and everyone else in the diner, Hector and Bo ride off together to a diner they've been to before. When Maisie breaks in, he kills everyone but Bo and Hector. After the diner slaughter, Bo manages to get his hands on the cop's gun and shoots Maisie, turning her back into a human. She begs Bo to shoot her and put an end to it as she lies bleeding and likely dying on the floor. Instead of doing so, Bo gives the gun to Maisie, allowing her to shoot herself. When Maisie does this, Bo raises her camera in preparation to capture the image of a bloodied, nude Maisie, shooting herself in the head. Charlie Brooker did, however, make a horror season pledge but doesn't seem likely that many viewers anticipated this twist. 